This is a very cool concept, an early stage developed framework using multiple diffusion models, including image and video models. Let me introduce you to AnyV2V. It's a plug and play framework for any video to video editing tasks. You can do things like, for example, take a source video of a person doing Tai Chi in a scenery and transform their face and outfit to other characters. Here, we see it changing to Jack Ma's face, then to a Star Wars character, all while maintaining the Tai Chi movements. There are a few key features included in this framework. As you can see in the introduction, we've got prompt-based editing, which allows you to simply use a text prompt in a very straightforward way to transform the video into whatever output you want from a reference video. So far, I find their examples to be very consistent. As you can see, all the pixel details don't change much, although there's still room for improvement. But for an open source framework, it's really well done already. The second feature is style transfer. Now you can use techniques like adaptive instance normalization to transfer an image style onto your video output using a reference video. For example, transforming ballet dancers into paint art style dancing video or turning a tiger into a paint art motion output like that. The third one is subject editing, where you can tell the AI to identify subjects in the video. For instance, we have a Lamborghini that gets transformed into the shape of a Hyundai, which results into a Hyundai shaped with Lamborghini blue as the output video. And below, there's a dog with a cat that gets combined into a dog-cat creature hybrid output. Lastly, there's identity management, which allows you to simply do face swaps of people and even change their outfits. This could potentially include text prompting too, depending on how you run it through the web UI tools. Currently, they have demos on Hugging Face and Replicate that are free to use. And on Replicate.com, you don't need to log in or sign up to run the demo. I saw some comments before about having to log in to Replicate, but from my testing, you don't need credits or to log in over there. Of course, on Hugging Face, it's more open, but if you need to download any models there, you do need an account and to agree to the terms to get access. So having an account for certain tasks is reasonable. Here's an example I generated already from a woman sitting on a beach. It transformed her into a monk meditating on the beach with slow motion. As you can see, the clothing and overall character style doesn't flicker much, but the camera does shake a bit when zooming in on different frames. Maybe with tools like Comfy UI or automatic Woven 111 extensions, we could try different samplers to refine the quality and potentially fix issues like the shaky camera movement. To give more context, this isn't actually a single AI model, but rather a framework that combines different models together as a system. What it does is use Instruct Pix to Pix, Instant NRF, and Neural Style Transfer components. It combines the source video with these four components to enable the video editing capabilities in this AI framework. The key thing is that this framework uses the first frame image from your source video as the reference for editing the output styles. It captures that initial frame and bases the motion transformation on that. So, if you have a longer video, they recommend cutting it down to just one motion sequence, around 2 seconds max. The reason for the 2 second limit is likely because with longer sequences, the camera may pan or change views which wouldn't match the initial reference frame the characters are based on. You can see on Hugging Face, after uploading the input video, it processes it at 512px512 dimensions, then moves to the image editing step using the Instruct Pix 2 Pix AI model. So in this case, the woman was transformed into a Buddhist monk, and I did that by just using a simple text prompt. There you go. For example, if I don't want to use a Buddhist monk, I can turn the woman into a robot sitting on the beach instead. You can do that as well. And currently, when I'm testing this Hugging Face demo page, it hasn't burned out yet. Hopefully, it'll still be up and running when you all try this demo. And here we go. The woman has turned into a robot sitting on the beach. Let's try another example. The last stage will be using video editing based on the edited image we have here. That's exactly what they mentioned in the research paper. They're using the first frame, doing image editing first, 
and then combining that output with the four AI model components for editing the final video output. Now, instead of using Buddhist monk, let's prompt with robot on the beach and silence. The text prompts don't have to be too complicated. You can use very simple ones and it works. So I'll click run video edit and it will process for a while before showing the result. Here's the result I got. Looks pretty cool. I tried reprompting with just robot to generate a complete robotic character. And as you can see, it replaced the woman's character while maintaining the same pose from the original source video. In this test result, although the animation isn't moving, the character style stays consistent for these two seconds because it uses prompt-based editing with the pixel-to-pixel -pixel technique. First, it captures the initial video frame, which is this one. Then it follows up using another diffusion model called I2V Gen XL with the DDIM sampling scheduler, which targets consistent stylistic sampling. Here's another example using a man hiking in a forest for the two second source video clip. And this is after processing to crop the dimensions for any V2V. Right here, we have the initial video frame for editing. I'll prompt it to turn the man into a Viking warrior. So it transforms this character into an Viking warrior outfit style. Let's run the video edit and see what gets generated. Okay, here's the result of the Viking warrior walking. This one I'd say is a fail. The first seconds look okay, but after that it starts to deform and break down. So for certain types of movement using existing video diffusion models like I2V or I2V Gen XL can struggle and needs improvement rather than this framework relying on them. To reiterate, this is not a single AI model, but rather a framework combining four different AI models and an image editing workflow to enable the video editing capabilities. So this demonstrates the full workflow. The NEV2V web UI is also available to download from GitHub, but I wouldn't recommend installing it locally yet as it consumes a ton of memory. That's why I didn't cover any local installation guides in this video. Because first, this framework requires the consist I2V model. Then it also uses the I2V Gen XL model. Those two are targeting image to video generation tasks. And now, they're also leveraging this new NEV2V framework to synthesize short edited video clips. So it's going to consume a massive amount of memory. When I tested the consist I2V model alone, it was taking up 20 gigabytes of RAM of memory just to generate 5 seconds of video. I wouldn't advise running this on a local machine at the moment until they optimize it with better memory handling by releasing unused objects to free up memory. But so far the NEV2V framework is a good experiment in using open source AI models to enable fairly consistent video editing, at least in terms of maintaining character style with just image or text prompts. And when we get higher performance, more consistent diffusion models in the future, we'll likely see more frameworks like this release that can leverage those capabilities for video editing. So yeah, that's it for this video. Hopefully sharing some of these new diffusion models has inspired you about how we can utilize AI for multimedia creation in the times ahead. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day. Take care.